My name is Ryan Miller. I'm a broadcasting student at Montclair State University. I'm in Bermuda, but not on vacation. I'm here to meet the Tucker family. Their son, Dakari, died of a brain aneurysm four years ago, and I received his heart. My story starts four years ago when I was a junior at Monroe Township High School. I enjoyed playing sports, especially soccer. That December, everything changed. A doctor thought I had pneumonia and ordered a chest x-ray. She said that they compared that chest x-ray to one I believe you had six or eight months prior when you were playing baseball, you had a ball to the chest. I noticed a, a difference. I had called daddy and said that it was bad. I remember running out of my office and the first thought that came to my head was, oh no, not one of my boys. We had been informed that I had a condition known as non-compactive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, also known as an enlarged heart. I was then transported to Newark Beth Israel Medical Center, one of the top heart hospitals in the country. In the development of the heart, the various parts of the heart muscle don't come together correctly and make a solid wall. So instead, they stay apart. Every time the heart beats, blood gets caught in these little spaces, and gradually the heart dilates up. On New Year's Eve, doctors tried to implant a defibrillator. It did not go well. You got into big time trouble in the cath lab, started to, to have multiple cardiac arrests. Uh, they wound up uh, rushing to the operating room, uh, unsure of what your neurologic status was. I lost blood flow to my brain for a total of four minutes. I was put on a machine that helped pump my heart for me. I was weak, but stable. Just to see your child with machines pumping, it was just too much. And the circuit breakers went off and I collapsed. I just fell right there on the floor. During the next few weeks, we faced more complications. Our greatest fear had been realized. I needed a heart transplant to save my life. I found out there are not many hearts available. There are somewhere between 40,000 and 80,000 patients with end-stage heart failure in the United States that might be eligible for heart transplants, but there are only 2,300 donors. Luckily, because I was 16, I was put on top of the transplant list. But I had to wait, and the days were filled with depression and doubt. I was mentally and physically exhausted. You were doubting, you know, why is this happening to me? Um, a hundred different comments coming out and I just lay there, stroked your head and just tried to reassure you that, you know, we're not going to let anything happen to you. That's what we're here for. And then we found out we had a match. A heart was available. Within minutes, what hit mom and I was the fact that we're sitting here celebrating and somebody had to lose their life for this to happen. There's a set of parents that lost a child so this could happen. Dakari, like me, was a soccer player. Playing for a club and also Bermuda's national soccer team, he was talented, well-liked, and loved by his friends and family. Dakari was my firstborn son. That was my greatest feeling ever. There was nothing that could, that could replace him. There was nothing that I would do for him. He was number one in my life, you know? Dakari was my firstborn, the love of my life. He was a good kid. He was very athletic. He was an um, a honor roll student. He was very organized, very loving, very giving person. One day at school, Dakari complained of a headache. Within minutes, he was unconscious. He was taken to the hospital, where they found massive bleeding in his brain. He and his mom were flown to Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore. And the first report I got was, we're not sure if he's gonna make it through the night. That was the worst. <laughs> the worst feeling ever to hear that. And I sat down and I prayed. And I said, please God, don't take my baby. After 10 days, doctors pronounced Dakari brain dead. 
The family decided to donate five organs, including his heart, which was a perfect match for me. It was flown to Newark Beth Israel Hospital. It took 16 hours to put Dakari's heart into me. Hey, Doc, say that again. It is perfect. <laughs> One beautiful heart. <laughs> <laughs> the surgery was a success, and Dakari's heart was beating strong inside my chest. After a few weeks, I could do everything I could before I was sick. I went on to captain my high school soccer team to a county championship my senior year. Then I enrolled at Montclair State University, where I became a broadcasting major. I've been waiting to be able to thank these people. There's no words that are adequate, but just to show them and demonstrate how much we appreciate what they've done, how they not only saved your life, but for all intents and purposes, saved ours. Meetings between donor and recipient families rarely occur immediately. Both sides need time to heal. It wasn't until we received a letter from the Tuckers a few months ago that we realized we may be given a chance to thank these people face to face. Can I ask you a question? I, I, I don't think I've ever asked you this question. It, it, it's a hard question for me to ask as your mother. How are you going to feel when and if they ask to put their hand on your heart? I never, I, it's, <laughs> I'd never and thought I, of that. Oh, God. I'm I, sorry. <laughs> no, it's, it's just that, that, that I never, never once thought of that. God. I'm just going to embrace it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I want that, you know, I want them to, if they want to feel Jakari, I want them to be able to feel him. Four years after receiving my life-saving heart transplant, I'm finally going to meet the family that donated their son's organs and saved my life. It's exciting. And maybe damaged or destroyed. It's different. It's, you know, it's, it won't really be real until we land. I think. Once we land in Bermuda, I think things will really start to set in as to what we're really, we're really about to adventure. The cab ride to their home was nerve-wracking. All I could think about was seeing Dakari's family. I didn't know it, but they were anxious too. My emotions are all over the place right now. I'm, I'm looking forward to this for, I guess, uh, I would say about two years. I wasn't ready before that, but I think now is the right time. Right in. Oh my gracious. Hi. I'm Ryan. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you finally. It is, it is, it is. <laughs> oh, wow. And you're his mom and dad. This yeah. is mom and dad. Hi. I'm Ryan. We hug, and I feel relief that the Tuckers are such a warm and welcoming family. I'm taken back by all of his accomplishments, and even more shocked to find out that we wore the same jersey number. They wanted, they invited me to come to his game. Like this was like a couple of months after he died, and I didn't know if I could do that. But they wanted me to see how they played, and they always left the space where the car would have played. It was just open. Like nobody stood there, even though they had another person playing. He never. Ryan scored his first goal. It was get we were winning. I mean, the crowd went wild. It just tears. And like when he scored, it was he was like, "I'm back." I'm so happy. This is this is actually happening, and this they're the most incredible people in the entire world. The Tuckers then brought me to Dakari School, Warwick Academy. They showed me the field named after him, and a tree planted in his honor. It was there that they asked to feel Dakari's heart beating. <laughs> right there. I wanted to allow the Tuckers to feel their son's heart and know that a part of him is still alive. The next day, Stephen took us to a local soccer match. This is where Stephen and I got a chance to bond over something he, Dakari, and I share a special love for. You could be my son, man. Because you got my son's heart, and I know it's beating inside of you, and I and I and I love you dearly because it's beating in you. 
It's gonna be everything is gonna be all right. You're gonna be part of me all my life. I don't care what it takes. I'm gonna make sure that you're all right, man. Your your mom and dad are there for you. Well, I want you to know that you got another mom and dad, man. And any time, man, for anything, man, if we can help, we're right here. You know, we 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 love you. And and I love you guys too. You guys really you brought me in to be a part of your family and. And you know, I could never replace Dakari. No one could. No. But I hope that I can help fill the void. My son was a good that he was a good boy. And I can see it in you that you're a good boy. And I wouldn't want no one no one better to have his heart, man. You got good character, good attitude. And I know you're gonna do great things. I feel there's something about you, man. I've only just met you, but I feel there's something special about you. It's hard for me to put into words how much I love the Tucker family. The Tuckers made me a part of their family. And I'm... And I'm forever grateful. Our meeting has opened up a whole new chapter in my life. <laughs>